Hi everyone. Welcome to my video series on pet portraits. Uh, my name is Lindsay Anderson. I have been a visual art teacher for 11 years and I am very much looking forward to uh, teaching you a little bit about a variety of styles and techniques to create portraits of our furry friends. Hi everyone, welcome back. It is now session three of our pet portrait drawings. Um, we are going to focus on colored pencils today. You are going to be creating a realistic colored pencil drawing of your animal. So you have, you should have three, three pieces of paper with three of your animals drawn. This is the one that I worked on last session with just the graphite, the regular pencil. We are going to pretend that um, I drew this one a second time, but I'm gonna do colored pencil on the area that is unfinished. So technically you will have a complete graphite drawing and then starting another colored pencil drawing. I hope that makes sense, but I'm going to just for, for time's sake, I'm gonna do colored pencil in the, in the area that is unfinished here. First things first, um, you probably have a basic set of colored pencils and that is totally fine. You'll have to get a little bit creative with layering and mixing colors and you'll have to understand that things probably aren't gonna be as realistic as possible in the color department just because um, you, would, you would sort of need a larger pack of colored pencil with a variety of colors. So fortunately, I'm gonna show you today um, some Prismacolor colored pencils. If you have Prismacolor colored pencils, that is awesome. If not, I will, I'll help you out with which colors to choose from your basic set. Regardless, um, you, you can achieve the same effects with, with very few colors because a lot of the time dogs are, or cats are, you know, white, gray, black, brown, tan. Um, and we can, we can do a lot with, with a basic set. So I'll show you both ways today. Um, you want to start with fairly dull color pencils. You actually don't want them to be too sharp when starting out because we're going to block in large areas of color. All right, so as you can see, um, I have my original image next to my piece that I'm working on, as I will the entire time. Um, although it's black and white, we're going to be working in color over here, but I have the original image up on my screen so that I can, I can refer to that when I'm trying to choose my colors. So we are going to start by blocking in large areas of color, and what I typically like to do is start start fairly dark. So my dog is black, brown, and tan. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with a black colored pencil and it's going to look a lot like graphite for a little bit um, because it is a black colored pencil. The, the big difference with colored pencils is that when you are shading, uh, you cannot erase unless you have some erasable colored pencils, which I doubt um, many people buy. Uh, you really you can't erase so you have to be you have to be prepared to you know, put that pencil on the paper and and it's gonna stay there same the same idea of pressure on your pencil applies to colored pencils as well I'm not putting a whole lot of pressure yet because right now I'm just lightly blocking in some areas of color. So I know that my dog is black over here in this area. So just keeping it nice and smooth, blocking in color. So that's basically just like coloring in a section or a shape. Um, let me bring in some browns because he starts to transition a little bit to brown fur over here. Again, just smooth application with a fairly dull colored pencil is going to give you this really smooth look. Later, we will sharpen our colored pencils and start adding some textural details. The fur will be just a whole bunch of lines, just like we did in here with the graphite, except we're going to do the same thing with colored pencil. 
if there are any areas that are super light, like, I don't know, a highlight or some really bright white fur, you kind of wanna leave those areas alone because like I said, you can't erase. So we have to, we have to be aware of where the highlights and shadows are so that we don't accidentally color in, you know, the whole ear when we shouldn't because we wanna show some of those highlights. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna jump to a time-lapse mode so that you can see this start to unfold and then we'll come back and talk about texture. Okay, so what I did was I just kind of colored in some of the shapes of color that I saw. I see a shape of black here. Um, I put a little bit more pressure in the areas where it was a darker black or a shadow in the fur. Um, I did only use yellow and brown to give myself that like he's he's almost like a reddish brown tan color like i said you're gonna have to get a little bit creative with what colors you mix together to achieve something that looks similar to what your dog is because you're not going to have the most accurate colored pencils i'm um, i'm sure of that so we are now going to come in with a sharper colored pencil and we're going to start adding some textural details. So actually, I sort of need to sharpen this pencil and I can't seem to find my sharpener. I'll be right back. Okay, so a handheld sharpener is fine, especially with colored pencils. You don't really wanna use anything that will eat too much of your colored pencil. So I always use a handheld sharpener. So what I'm gonna do is very similar to what we did at the last step of the graphite session, uh, we're going to go in and we're going to lay in those um, lines that essentially are fur. And we're going to develop some of that texture. So the most important part of this, just like I said over here, is that you follow, you follow the contours of your animal and you follow which direction the fur is going in because if you look over here you can see that the fur goes out it comes down it goes up we want to make sure that we're doing exactly that with our pencil so that it looks realistic if you were doing fur in one direction it just wouldn't it wouldn't look realistic at all because that's not what that's not what happens so you can go in and it's not like you have to use little tiny dashes of line for the entire thing but probably the majority of your dog is going to be pretty textured. Here's the, here's the interesting part, and I'll talk to you a little bit about this while I work. If you have a white dog, there's a slide that is gonna show up in a little bit talking about how to, how to render with colored pencil a white dog because you're thinking, okay, well, there is no color in my dog. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to look at that dog, look at the picture or the cat, whatever it is, and pick out any squint, okay? Squint and pick out any colors you see. I promise you, you are gonna see grays. I promise you, you might see blues. Most of the time, white dogs kind of develop the little tan um, stained fur around the lips, around the eyes find those colors. You will find them if you look hard enough for them and, and lay them in there, okay? That's how you achieve that, that effect. I guess what you could do at the end or maybe even before, you could lay a light, maybe even light watercolor wash later in the background just to show where the background is and then where the white fur starts that's an option um he, my dog kind of has a white a white mouth he's getting a little bit older so one thing that you can do is you can find the edges and not really do let's say an outline but you can certainly give it a little bit of a shadow right around the edge of whatever white fur you're trying to to capture. 